Hey, so hi everyone and welcome to another Your Story recording where we explore the varied and interesting routes colleagues have taken into their careers at Owen Mitchell. So could you let people know your name, who you work for and your job title? Yeah, hi Nikki, so I'm Sarah Holdsworth and I am the Business Design Chapter Lead. Brilliant. So tell us about a typical day in your role, Sarah. So a typical day for me varies quite greatly. So I've got um, responsibility of a, a team of people. There's about 30 of us overall and um, we support the business in achieving its strategic goals. Um, so across the team, I've got three roles, business architecture, business analysis and change management. And um, my role really is to make sure that those guys can do the very best job that they can. So I spend quite a lot of my time um, during the day um, supporting those guys, coaching, having conversations, uh, collaborating around some of the work that we do, resolving some issues. It's a lot of time talking to people, uh, but I love talking, so <laughs> that's never an issue for me. And um, and I love uh, coaching and seeing people develop as well. So um, yeah, it, it's quite varied from day to day, um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's about getting the team uh, to do the best job that they can. Brilliant. And so could you share some of the key moments in your life that have influenced your career? Um, yeah, sure. So I think there's probably been um, quite a few kind of defining moments, if you like, across uh, across my career. I um, went to university, did a contemporary art degree. Um, I've always been a creative person and loved <clears throat> kind of art and wanted to be a, a graphic designer initially. And when I left university, um, I'd had the opportunity to do loads of uh, different creative things in digital media and all sorts of stuff. And I thought I wanted to be a um, documentary and reality TV editor. But I graduated in 2009, which was the um, obviously height of the financial crash. There was little to no graduate jobs on the market. And those that were there were really oversubscribed and really underpaid. So I stuck at the little contact centre job that I'd had um, all throughout the university and I just thought I'll I'll stay there until things get a little bit better out in the market. And after a little while, I started to pick my head up, if you like, around the, the, the business and have a look at what else was going on. And, and I could see that um, we were running little groups called workouts at the time and they were basically just workshops of colleagues that were interested in solving some problems around the business. And I remember asking in that moment, could I get involved in, in some of those things? I, I started to get a little bit interested in things broader than what I was doing immediately in front of me. And um, in doing that, I started to contribute to one or two of these workshops and kind of got scouted to be involved in, a, in another piece of work that took me on a secondment out of the role that I was doing and into a project team. Um, so I worked on this project team side by side with McKinsey um, for about, uh, well, in the first instance, it was about four months and then I did it on a, on a full time basis, on a permanent basis. But um, I learned so much in that time just by taking that opportunity. And um, I did that for about four years before um, a lot of changes happened within the company and um, a lot of our team were, were made redundant. So I chose to take redundancy at that time. I was, I was young. I was about 23, 24 um, and decided that uh, I was young enough and didn't have any of the responsibilities around me. I could afford to uh, take a leap of faith and start my own business. Um, so for two years, I ran my own business and uh, really enjoyed it. Learned a lot about myself and um, pushing myself out of my comfort zone on loads of different occasions. Did some pretty big jobs in that time, um, as well as spending a lot of time not earning very much money. Uh, it's peaks and troughs when you, when you do that sort of thing. Um, and... There was a moment where I realised I really missed being a part of a team, having people around me to learn from, um, having um, something that I was building and contributing towards I could see in front of me on a daily basis. And um, I decided to, to step back into the world of work. And for me, I didn't consider that a failure. I decided that that was something that was still a successful part of my life because I learned so much of it, even though I didn't build the massive company that I maybe might have wanted to when I first set out. Um, but I really enjoyed that time and I really learned a lot about myself. So I love being part of a team. Uh, so I went back into um, to work at Empower, which was uh, an enjoyable for a couple of years, although a long, a long way to travel um, for that time. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I, I started working at Erin Mitchell three years ago in a, in a similar sort of capacity, project and program um, related stuff then moved into sort of slightly bigger roles with uh, change and, and broader teams and uh, and that's kind of where I am now the business design lead so 
So yeah. Amazing story. <laughs> um, and so if you could go back in time to when you were at school, what's the piece of advice that you'd give to yourself? I think there's probably a few things. Um, for me, I think it's take advantage of the skills that you've got and realise that you can apply them in lots of different ways. I wanted to be a graphic designer or a reality TV editor, but really that was just creativity. And I could apply that across so many different things. And I'll make incredible slide presentations, but I'm also great at solving problems. Uh, and working and helping other people to solve problems. So I'd say take those skills, the talents that you have, and just apply them in, in loads of different ways. That's brilliant advice, Sarah. Thank you ever so much. No worries. Cheers, Nikki.